everyone. This is Melissa Farthing on the campus of Huntington University. You're listening to Rooted, an in-depth conversation with interesting people and topics that matter to the Forrester family. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. You can find us by searching Forrester Radio Rooted. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Nick Altman. Mr. Altman teaches radio and television at Huntington North High School and serves as the station manager for 91.9 FM WVSH. All right, well, thank you so much, Mr. Altman, for being here. Pleasure to be here. My first question for you is, can you tell me a little bit more about your teaching background and how you got to where you are today? Teaching background, there wasn't a whole lot of it when I started. Really, going way back, uh, I actually went to school. I discovered radio and television really in middle school and through high school, and I was a part of that. And my senior year, I got into journalism. And by the time I got into college, I pursued a career in journalism, which, whether it be print, television, radio, it didn't matter. It kind of covered all of those. And got a job right out of college at the Herald Press here in Huntington and loved what I did there. Really had a, an amazing newsroom team around me, wonderful mentors, editors, uh, to kind of show me the ropes. But at one point, I remember I was sitting at uh, an IU game. I was on press row because Huntington North's Sean Klein was a student or was a player at IU. So we caught up with him regularly throughout the season. And I'm sitting on press row, and I started looking around. And, you know, here I am. I'm 24 years old. And I noticed that there's not a hardly a wedding band on any fingers. And in my head, for some reason, I started thinking, this this career, as much as I love it, this isn't very conducive for a family. And that's, you know, a dream above being a journalist was I wanted to be a father, wanted to be a family man. And I ended up getting out of the newspaper business, and I got a marketing job up at Glenbrook Square. I was in the management office at Glenbrook. And that wasn't a bad job, but I just didn't feel good about myself doing it. and But I had stayed in contact with my old radio teacher, and he had retired. And I knew that he was in the process of searching or helping search for his successor. And I just asked him, how's the search going, Mr. Walker? And he said, you know, well, not great. We've got two candidates. And he thought that one candidate would be dynamite in the classroom. But that person wasn't willing to do any of the after-school stuff, which I know the radio station at Huntington North, it's a lot of the underwriting and that sort of stuff. It's funded by the after-school, or that's the underwriting stuff comes from the after-school broadcasts. So that person wasn't a great candidate. And then he said the other person was all fired up about the sports casts and after-school things, but he was worried they wouldn't be very strong in the classroom. So I got home... This all happened at a 10 caps game. We went to a game and afterwards just shot in the dark. I sent an email to Ken Klein with my resume and said, you know what, I'm going to throw my hat into the ring here. And I got an email back immediately and Ken said, or Ken Klein, the principal, said, Nick, I've known you as a student. I've known you as a newspaper reporter. I've known you all these years. I think you'd be great in the classroom, but you have no classroom experience and you have no teaching license. Would you be willing to go back and take some classes. Sure, why not, I said. And he, within a couple minutes, then had an assistant principal call me. We set up an interview, and I believe the game that Mr. Walker and I went to, the 10 Caps game, was on a Thursday. I was offered the job by the following Tuesday or Wednesday. It all happened within less than a week, and I was able to put my two weeks notice in up at Glenbrook, and it was exactly two weeks before the first teacher day at Huntington North. So needless to say, like for every first year teacher, the first year you're treading water, but I really had nothing <laughs> going on, but I survived it. And it to this day, I feel like it was one of my better years teaching even because I just had different relationships with the kids. Yeah, no, that's interesting that you, you mentioned that because that kind of leads into my next question. I was wondering if your teaching style has changed since you started, um, if at all, and how, how did it change? Well, you can say going back to that first year, it was so haphazard, like getting thrown into it. All I knew as far as teaching was what Mr. Walker had done when I was in his classroom. 
So that first year was difficult for me because I was trying to be Mr. Walker. And anybody who knows Mr. Walker knows that nobody can be Mr. Walker. So really by my second year, we I tweaked some of the projects and really built out some things a little bit more. And I think from a planning side and a curriculum side, I think it was better. And over the years, I feel like as that stuff has gotten more refined, it's allowed me to focus more on the relationships with students as well, which I think is that's becoming more and more the key in, in education. So what challenges have you faced as a teacher at Huntington North and how have you overcome them? Really, one of the, I guess, big challenges is, first of all, I feel like with any any team at, at school at the uh, scholastic level, you have to find students who are willing to put forth the time and effort to be a part of it because our radio station at Huntington North, I really strive to have students on the air. Does that mean it's going to be as refined as maybe if it was a a long time adult announcing games? Yeah, it's probably not going to be as smooth. But at the high school level, that's where students can can learn and they can try different things and see what works. And they can actually, you get those reps in and they get better as the season progresses, which is really what I look for. You want to see students improve as the season progresses. But it's become difficult at times to find students willing to commit the time. So sometimes I have to twist some students' arms and say, hey, let's just try this for a game or so. If you can commit for two games, that would be great, and then we'll decide if you want to do it full season. And nine times out of ten, after a couple games, they really enjoy the being on air. It, it provides them with kind of an outlet that they wouldn't get at a lot of other schools. Very cool. As I was researching, I found out that last April you were honored as Huntington North's Teacher of the Year, and I wanted to know what it was like receiving that award. Surprising, <laughs> I guess, um, because there are so many other teachers in the building who I know work every bit as hard or harder and probably do a better job or whatever, but they're equally as deserving as me, probably more deserving, I would say. But, yeah, it was an incredible honor because our administration staff at the high school right now, they're all people who, two two of our assistant principals were actually teachers when I was a student. And the current principal was a colleague when I first started teaching. So, and it's one that I, I have great respect for. So to be honored by them, it really meant a little bit more for that. Many of your students have won awards from, for example, Indiana Association of Student Broadcasting, which we work with them here, too, as well on the college level. How does it feel to see your students succeed, whether it's winning an award or going on to work somewhere in broadcasting? That's the, the greatest success that I can have. I mean, I, I don't think anybody who teaches teaches for their personal accolades. It's what their students do beyond high school or, you know, seeing them succeed. And it doesn't even have to be within broadcasting. I've had a lot of students who, when I have them in class, they really they don't like school. Maybe they don't get the greatest of grades, and they don't see the value in it. But a handful of them, I'm still able to make good relationships with them or connections with them, and I keep in touch on Facebook. And I can think of a couple of them who they didn't go into broadcasting, but to see them having success and starting families of their own, even outside of broadcasting, is incredible. Really, to see students within the field, too, that's, I like to think of WVSH and Huntington North as, or H&HS Today, our weekly television announcements. They're just stepping stones, and if the kids, if students choose to go that route, they can gain some experience and hopefully move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah, doing some video production work in high school, I think, has really prepared me for for an animation major. And then my final question, I know you mentioned your old professor, Mr. Walker, a lot from the radio. Can you explain a little bit more about how he inspired you to kind of go into this this career path? Well, how I got into this career path, it's um, really just by staying in in contact with him is what really led to it. Um, I can think as far back as maybe fifth grade, I had a fifth grade teacher named Tish Bailey who I adored, and she, it it was around then I thought, you know, maybe I could be a teacher when I grow up. So it was always kind of rolling around in the back of my head as a possibility, but I ended up not pursuing it, 
just I fell in love with other things. And really by keeping in touch with Mr. Walker, it allowed me to kind of have the best of both worlds because I'm I'm teaching, but working within media as well. So yeah, that's been a real blessing to have to have both of those things going on. But I remember one of those early years teaching. So I'm not the only WVSH alum who is teaching. Adam Schenkel up at Homestead High School, he's their radio TV teacher. He was actually my broadcast partner my sophomore and junior years at, at Huntington North. So both of us are teaching, and he and I were together one evening just talking, and I remember asking, what did Mr. Walker really teach us? And both of us were really just dumbfounded. And it led to what's really one of my big philosophies in education. I mean, Mr. Walker obviously taught us the basics, but really then he just let us explore and let us try things and figure out what worked. And I don't think a lot of classes offer the amount of time necessary for students to do that. We're so focused on, you know, certain data points and grades and all that stuff that students don't have a chance to, well, let me try it this way and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then you go back to square one and redo it. I think students have to have a chance, an opportunity to explore and try things. And with that comes an opportunity to fail. I I think students have to figure out that, hey, just because it didn't work doesn't mean that I can't get it to work. I just have to try something different next time. So having that opportunity to try something, see if it works, go back to the drawing board if necessary, that's something that I learned through my time at Huntington North under Mr. Walker is just go ahead and try things. If it doesn't work, that's fine. You'll have other opportunities. And it just really worked. It works for me right now. So I try to build in when it comes to projects more than enough time for students to do that. I mean, I'll have some students come into my class who they'll see that we have two weeks to work on a project. They'll really knock it out within the first few days to a week, which is great. Sometimes that really works, but other times students will try something and then go back to the and, and put it together and it doesn't really work. So then we'll revisit it and say, okay, what worked when you tried it that time? What didn't work? How can we change that? And it gives them a little bit of a window to explore more and see what works for them. I feel like, yeah, at Huntington, we have kind of that opportunity to, to, to try different things. So, so that's neat that that's been able to work for you and your students. Well, that's, that's all the questions I have. Thank you so much for coming in again. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And thank you for listening. Make sure you've subscribed to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. And remember, you can listen to Forrester Radio over the air in Huntington on 105.5 FM WQHU or by visiting our website at ForresterDigital.net. See you next time and stay rooted.